Susan Solomon. I was the co-chair of Working Group 1, the science panel of the IPCC, and we finished the fourth assessment report in 2007. Well, at first I was a lead author on uh, chapters on radiative forcing beginning in the 1994 report, and I participated in the second assessment, the third assessment, and then in the fourth assessment I served as the co-chair of the science panel, uh, working group one, uh, and we completed the fourth assessment report in 2007. I think the greatest achievement of IPCC has been to show that fundamentally uh, science is, is, is not negotiable, the truth is not negotiable, and it can actually at the same time help negotiators to discuss what to do about that information. So I, I'm, I'm very uh, pleased with the way that the interface between scientists and policymakers has led to a greatly improved understanding uh, among the, the, the policy people of what we really can say about what we know and also what we don't know about the climate system. Well, IPCC has uh, clearly been tremendously uh, helpful to diplomats in, in, in achieving an enhanced understanding. I think the challenge will be how it will evolve as we move into an era when uh, different countries are beginning to think about what, what more uh, they, they might do. Um, as the Kyoto Protocol uh, ends and a new uh, process begins, we really are facing a whole host of challenges regarding how nations are going to work together. So um, I think the, the, the future uh, for IPCC will, will fundamentally involve figuring out how to fit into that new challenge in a constructive way. And it's very difficult. I don't have an immediate answer for what would be the right pathway, but I think everyone has to recognize that we are facing a new transition where the role of such an organization in informing future actions really is, it has to be reinvented to be successful. I think one of the key things about IPCC that has made it so successful has been the rigor of its process. And I think that whatever we do as we think about a, a future process, hanging on carefully to that tradition uh, which has been so phenomenal for the achievements in the past and has been so helpful really not only to the diplomats but also to the science community is going to be absolutely essential. So. Uh, despite pressure to do things faster uh, or to do things differently, I think at the same time we have to be thinking about how to always, always, always be rigorous in our approach. You know, the most re rewarding part of uh, being involved in IPCC is actually the opportunity to work with other scientists from people all around the world, from developed countries, developing countries, speaking many different languages, and actually speaking the common language of science. I found that to be uh, an incredibly inspiring and wonderful experience. One of the things people often don't realize about IPCC is the way that the assessment process actually helps so many different aspects of activities around climate science. So, of course, it's helping the diplomats to understand the science, and it's helping the scientists to understand uh, how, to, how to best assist the diplomats. But it's also much more than that. It actually helps the science community to think about the, the, the scale of what we know, what we don't know, uh, where the key uncertainties are. It helps the science community to uh, interact across borders, to interact between different nations, between different disciplines. So it has brought uh, a huge set of uh, benefits in self-examination, in rigor uh, to the science, as well as accomplishing its uh, diplomatic purpose. And the reason that it's able to do so is really because of the interaction, not just between scientists and diplomats, but also with the broader community, with the public, 
uh, with the reviewers. The, the process is a remarkably open and uh, unique process.